Okay, so um, this is one of our like banana bites presentations. Uh, once in a while, we do a narrated um, walk, so to speak, of one of the things here on the website. Uh, this is uh, an interesting case, a rare case, spinal epidural hematoma. There's a pseudoaneurysm in there. Um, don't see that too often. So this patient presents with um, respiratory failure. Uh, she uh, remembers after being extubated like 24 hours later, she remembers feeling faint and calling 911. And uh, thankfully she had time to do that. That saved her life. Uh, they found her, intubated her, extubated her later. Uh, and uh, when they did, there was uh, like four out of five weakness in the left upper extremity. Otherwise she was fine, the tox was negative. So it's also an interesting presentation of this situation here. Here's a CAT scan. You can see that there is a hyperdensity. It looks like uh, dorsal left epidural space. MRI also looks like it's extramedullary. So um, there it is. Now, this is a question of standard of care. Is there a standard of care to injure people with uh, cryptogenic epidural hematomas. I don't know if there's a standard, but we got our own standards. And our standard of care is to do exactly that. So we angio. A lot of times you don't find anything, nor venous. But in this case, it ain't venous. You can see that there is a little bit of a contrast puddle here. It's uh, about C4 level, right? Coming from the vert. So that's going to be like a little pseudoaneurysm, right? Most likely. Now, <clears throat> this spinal business, is, as we talk about, a lot of it is about technique. Go back to this picture. You're going to see that there's a reflux into some branch here, some muscular branch uh, from the vert. Now, which branch is that? Uh, here, we're injecting the sarocervical cervical trunk. And um, this is an ascending cervical branch. It's another variation here of its origin beyond the point. But you see that there is a vessel here, there's like a little fork like that. You go back, look at that. Seems very similar to this, no? Uh, but no, no pseudoaneurysm. Now, uh, be it as it may, really you need to like have a good injection technique. This is a five French vert here. So we change to a four French vert. And a four French vert goes a little bit easier into this branch. And so here we're injecting stronger injection. Now you see a few more things. You see the vert right here. Uh, no mystery. There's a lot of connections between the ascending cervical and the vert. Here's one of them. But uh, now we also see this little blush and that's our target, right? So this branch here is the same branch we saw earlier today, but a little stronger injection. And we can see the uh, pseudoaneurysm. In the lateral view, same, same, right? Here's the ascending cervical, here's the vert, and there's the uh, pseudoaneurysm. Cone down view of the vert. The arrows are the same type throughout, so you can correlate those. And here we see like a, a lot of reflux from the vert injection into the ascending cervical. And the whole network is now um, visible. And there's the target, right? Okay, so um, it's a headway duo. Now we put that into the origin of this C4 muscular branch, right? And from that, through this injection, we again reflux into the ascending cervical. You see that there's no direct connection from this vert. Really the supply is from the ascending cervical as much as there's a network between that and the vert. Here's the target, lateral view. Okay, now, so what do we do? We move the duo, it's a single, uh, Single tip, headway duo, it's the longer duo, it has a smaller distal cross-sectional outer diameter. It's this like very, very, one of our favorite uh, over the wire catheters um, because, um, because of how it is. And so here we come into this, you see the, remember that fork? So we're in the upper division of that fork. We interrogated the lower one, didn't find anything there. And so here we're injecting <clears throat> the, um, there's a microcatheter injection. Now, where is this catheter going to be? So you know that this 
branch has access to dural space. Now, what branch has access to dural space? A radicular dural branch, right? Now, it could be radicular medullary if it also supplies the anterior spinal axis, radicular peel if it's posterior. But one of the, there's a bunch of names for these, but the bottom line, what are you going to know? You're going to know that this catheter is going to have to come through the neural foramen in order for you to see these dural branches. So here's the lateral dural branch here. This is the frontal view. You're way off midline, right? So this is not the anterior spinal. Here's the lateral view. <clears throat> and again, here's the tip of the catheter, our dural network. You see this vessel here. Um, it's, you have to spend some time on it. If you don't have the benefit of the dyna, you really have to know the anatomy. You will be sure that there is no supply here to the spinal cord. And you can't, I don't think you can be totally sure that there's nothing posterior spinal or maybe a little anterior contribution. You don't see any anterior. The posterior lateral spinal and posterior spinal can be a little tricky, especially in the cervical spine. So um, this is really uh, something that you need to be like a little bit sure about. And so here we do this injection. Again, here's the vert. Now we're in this position. You know this catheter is going to be sitting in the C4 foramen or somewhere near it. If you want to be sure what to do, we do what we do um, often, which is a dyna. Now, if you have the benefit of doing that, then you know how to do them. Um, apnea, breath hold, general anesthesia. It's a lot of technique. You can't do this stuff, you know, under moderate sedation or if you want to. Uh, it's up to you, uh, but um, you really don't want to. So here's the injection. So here's like a couple of these slices. Now at this slice, you see both the tip of your catheter, which is really sitting in the C4 foramen. And that's the epidural. You see the lens shape epidural hematoma. It's great, right? The dura is really outlined by the injection. So the hematoma is in the middle. Here's the dura. And there's your pseudoaneurysm, right? Very nice. So these pictures are really like this, like, when you talk about anatomy, um, you, see the, you see what's going on. Now, the interesting thing is, if you look at these sagittal views, so here's your hematoma, you see this. What is that? Now, that I'm going to tell you what that is. I'm going to figure out what that is when you study the page in detail. So, uh, at this point, we decide to glue this. Now, you can annex it and... We have a wedge position. I don't think onyx is a terrible idea um, in this particular case. But uh, we, we, we think if you're equally comfortable with both onyx and glue, glue is better. Here. So we use the glue. Now, we have to do a couple of considerations. First of all, the primary problem is this, right? You have this vert. So the connection to the vert, you have to be careful. For that reason, you don't want the glue to be too uh, dilute. If there's a lot more oil than glue, well, it's not going to polymerize very quickly. And if it gets here, what's going to happen is the flow of the vert is going to take the glue up, fragment it into lots of little embolic pieces and deposit them somewhere where you don't want them to be. So um, what you want to do is uh, make the glue a little bit more gluey. That means less oil. Less oil means you can't see it very well. So we decided to add some tantalum to this um, that comes with the glue, right? So we added a little bit of tantalum uh, to help facilitate the visualization. Now, as it turned out, there was a little glitch here as things don't always go well. And so the tantalum sometimes make precipitates in the catheter and it's a very thin catheter. So the injecting and halfway through the injection, I feel a lot of resistance. So um, that's not great. There's two choices. You can either stop or keep injecting, right? If you keep injecting, you can rupture the catheter. If you rupture the catheter, bad things happen. Now, um, it's a little bit of like you have to decide. I kept injecting because I felt that um, I could still push forward, number one. And number two, the guide is not in the vert. If the guide was in the vert, I would have stopped because if the catheter ruptures in the vert, it's... it's, it's it's, it's going to be terrible. But here, I'm in the ascending cervical distal to the vert origin and the subclavian. So figured I'd do it. And so it worked out. <clears throat> it was a little tenuous. Um, but uh, ultimately, we get this cast. 
and you see how it's coming up here, here I decide like, well, probably I shouldn't push too much more because the birth is gonna be coming up a little higher. And some of it goes down here as well. So it wasn't that bad, um, but we didn't get into the aneurysm, which would be ideal. Given everything, I wasn't too crazy to keep pushing. Now the glue cast is right here. <clears throat> you can see that this is, so this is just NBCA cast. And uh, it's always more than what meets the eye, right? Like on the Dyna, you see that there's more glue than you could see uh, on that roadmap, life subtraction view. But there's a lot more glue in a good space, like, right? It's like, look at this, reach here, you reach here. And that's, um, you know, right here and more along the back. And the sagittal views are also kind of encouraging. You see that we've filled out much, look, see how low it goes, like way lower than you can see. Um, <clears throat> on the screen uh, when you're injecting, so that you have to know that that happens and not uh, do too much. It's um, easy to overdo it. So we don't want to overdo it. So here is what the cast looks like. Um, it's all dural, uh, as you can see. Um, if you go up, back up here, it's all in the dural space. There's nothing in the court. Um, and so that's it now. Ideally, you want to fill the pseudo, like you want to fill the pseudo aneurysm. Do you have to? In this case, I don't think you have to because uh, you just decrease a lot of pressure. We got into this whole network. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Um, now, if you saw any, like going back, like decide you want to try gluing it, we didn't open the glue until we got uh, the dynasty. If I saw any anterior or posterior spinal arteries, I don't think I'd want to glue it because the surgical morbidity of this is really extremely low. As far as the cord goes, morbidity is just like surgical, surgical stuff. Infection, you know, bleeding. Yes, occasionally there's issues with, you're not probably even going to need to open the dura. So that's like the morbidity is really like, you know, laminectomy of some sort and, and the opening. Uh, the catastrophic morbidity is low. So you're going to inject this, uh, you got to really like, not mess it up, <laughs> but um, I think it was a decent um, setup here. The anatomy was favorable and it worked out. So here's the post descending cervical. Here's the post vert. As you can see, the thing is gone. Uh, patient went home. So it's a nice illustration, I think, of a rare entity. Uh, some good anatomy here and some good technique uh, points to consider. It is uh, our approach, again, to angio people with cryptogenic spinal hematomas, right? the dural ones. Uh, we have a couple of cases. There's another really good case of a similar thing that we have on the website as well. Free to check it out. Um, you see it's in the, uh, you know, in the uh, case library section. So far, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, come back, you wanna study this page on your own for uh, just more like individual insight and information. Thank you.